Hi, I'm Jan Harrell here at Cool Tools and I have a great technique for sifting through a stencil on a curved surface. In a previous video I have shown you how to use these wonderful stencils but they've all been on a flat surface. Those are a great place to start because that's easier to work with. However, I like to work on some pieces that have a little bit of a form to them. I sought out some um, 20 gauge copper pieces while I was in Houston with this great template that I really like doing that. So I just scribed around the edge onto my 20 gauge material and I sawed these pieces out. On a few of them I used the disc cutter to make a hole at the top which is where the bail will be. But on a few of the other ones I decided that I would use some hard solder and solder a small piece of copper tubing to the back where a cord could fit through. I've counter enameled all of these pieces so we can get to work on this project today. I've taken both of these pieces that are on raw copper over to the sink. I've scrubbed them with a green scrubby pad and some cleanser and I know that they're very clean, but I'm still going to put a little bit of surfactant on each one of them. When you're working with pieces that have a soldered element, you have to be a little bit more careful with the temperature on the kiln. I like to keep the kiln at about 1350 for a soldered element. Hard solder flows at I don't know, don't test me on this, but 14 something, 1420. So I know that if we keep these in the kill under that, the solder will not have uh, any time to get molten and these pieces will stay very sturdy. Also, the counter enamel on the back acts as a little bit of an insulating factor. So it takes it longer for the um, solder to act like it's going to drop off and your piece won't have the connection on the back. So both of those pieces have surfactant on them and I'm going to use the same technique that I used with the flat pieces and put a little bit of glycerin on each one of them and that's going to be our holding agent. I want to really coat it on the edges because we want that design to read over the entire surface. Now, it gets a little trickier when you're working on a curved surface. So you have to hold your template kind of in the area you're going to sift first and then move your fingers up to the top to hold this down. Can you see how we've got a little bit of clearance in between the two? That would be okay. We'll get a little bit of a diffused design, but I want you to try for the hardest thing possible, which is to get really close contact on here. One of my favorite colors is this pastel brown, which I consider a warm white. I've got my 200 mesh sifter, so I can really get this detailing in on this intricate stencil. And then I'm going to start at the bottom. When I think I have enough of that in that area, then I'm going to kind of move my fingers very carefully up here to hold this edge down. Believe me, I worked on this stuff for a couple of weeks before I came up here, so if it looks easy, I did my job, but if it looks bad, all you do is start over. Nothing's been fired. So lift this gently and move it to the side. Oh, look at that. So a lot of enamel on there. We're going to get a nice crisp edge. Uh, if you wanted to, you could come back in here and take a little bit out, but I actually think this is the way the stencil looks. Let's see if I can do it on the other piece. And let me try a different stencil on this one. So here we have the piece. 
with the hole that will uh, be very easy to put a jump ring in there. A piece of uh, fine silver tubing could be used to address that hole and really dress it up. If you've seen the video about um, the fine silver tubing. Let's pick another design. Maybe this one. So we do surfactant. Then we put a little bit of glycerin on here. So I know a lot of you probably work with transparent enamels and you're looking for beautiful clarity in a piece. Maybe you're working on silver. This is a whole different process from that. We're looking for a pop of a design element, a, a, a little bit of texturing to it. We're not going to get a lot of clarity to this, but these are going to be really bold uh, pendant items that will give us kind of a, a great statement piece. Let's see if I can do this today. So I'm holding down the leading edge. And as I approach the center, I rotate my fingers around just a bit so I can catch the top of the copper element. Lift carefully. Oh, well, I'm having a good day here. So there's two pieces. Those are going to go in the kill. I'll fire them and I'll be back to show you the results. Here are our two pieces uh, just out of the kill. They've been fired for about two and a half to three minutes. I go a little bit longer uh, at 1400 degrees on these pieces because I really want to encourage that edge of the enamel to get that little black crusty edge on it. I love this about copper. It has a very um, warm and earthy appearance and we're really using um, the red qualities of the copper to come through in a transparent. So I don't soak these in acid. Uh, that would take a little bit too much of the black away and I kind of like that. So what I've done with these, I've taken them to the sink. I used a green scrubby pad and I scrubbed off any bit of fire scale that was going to fly off when it goes back into the kiln. So you don't want any loose fire scale on there, but this really makes the line read better. Let me show you an example. So this is one. I've done some additional painting on this one, but you can see that it doesn't have that black crunchy around each of the design elements in here. So this was soaked in an acid or a pickle solution, cleaned up, and then I put the enamel on top. Uh, I'm going to try it differently for this demo for you. So for this piece, I've chosen to use one of my favorite colors, Elan Gray. It's a light transparent gray, looks great on top of raw copper, and it will also impart a little bit of a gray tone to this white. To do that, I need to put a surfactant because I'm going to spray with clear fire and I really want good adhesion along the edges of this piece. So in order for me to put the enamel back in its package at the end of the day, I'm going to spray off to the side and I saturate it pretty well. And I'm probably going to do two spray sifts. I can still see the pink of the copper showing through and that means I don't have enough on there to actually cover as a color and it will just pit. So there's a fine line between too much enamel and too little and that looks like a really good coat. I have to dry this before it is fired and I'm going to set that off on the kill. Let me do the other piece for you. So for the next piece I am just going to use one of my favorite colors which is Flux. Uh, Flux is like a clear coat of enamel. 
It is a barrier between the red of the copper coming through into your transparent enamels. But I also call it just the workhorse. It does everything. If you only had $10 to spend on enamel, buy Flux. That's the color to go with. It gives you the ability to paint on top and do a lot of other procedures. So here's my second piece that was fired. The good old surfactant again. Now, if I have these many lumps in here, which this is a pretty volumetric piece, I want to be sure I'm not putting on too much of the surfactant because that could act as a little bit of dirt in your enamel. You might get some bubbling around these edges, so you want to take care that you've put on enough and then wipe it off. So it's just a whisper. The 2015 is a medium fusing flux, which means that I can put other things on top of it if I'm careful with my firings. It also means that I don't need to leave it in so long. If I had a hard fusing flux on top, I might have to leave it in longer. My whites might go away. So it's kind of a design choice for that. Once again, I'm going to spray off to the side. Get it fairly situated with uh, enamel and um, clear fire on the edges. You know, if you don't like holding this stuff in your hand, you just have to get used to it. It's the best way to hold your piece and you really get a feel for, yeah, you get a feel for it, I guess. Now, see how much I've saturated that with the clear fire? That also helps the small particles of enamel to go down into the grooves instead of just sitting on the top. So that looks, we don't see any pink of the enamel, uh, of the copper coming through the enamel. I'm going to let these both dry, fire them, and bring them back. Here are our two pieces that was um, a stencil pattern done directly on top of copper. We cleaned the piece up just a little bit, but we left the black fire scale. This one has the 2015 flux on it. It's fired beautifully. If I wanted this to be a little bit more golden, like this piece, I would put this back in the kiln, adding no more enamel to it, and I would fire it two to three more times, and that will become a more golden look to it. I kind of like the terracotta that's in here. It's a lovely, warm look, but if you were going to do a lot of hand painting on the top of this piece, you might want to reduce some of the redness out of that so a transparent color would show up better. But it's always an option. There's a whole lot of difference in color between this and the next. Maybe two or three more firings in between, you'd have two or three different colors out of that. On this side, we have the Elan Gray. Just gorgeous. And this is going to be a totally different piece from this one. We'll come back in another video and do some painting techniques on top of these areas, and you'll see how we can really adorn this piece. Enamel is so much prettier on a curved surface. It reflects the light so much better, so don't be afraid. Try this technique and see if you can get those enamel grains to hold still. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.